Welcome, welcome everybody back to my channel, King Heart. I am going to talk to the society, white supremacy. You are still in trouble with us. And I think you know what I mean. And black folks, you need to hear this too. So what they've done, <laughs> they have made Juneteenth a uh, holiday, a national holiday for us. Wow, yippee. What well, is supposed to do that? You're supposed to do that. But you're not going to do that as a symbolic gesture of reparations, a symbolic, you know what I'm saying, correction to us. Now, we're not that stupid. But we do need, you know, these things done. However, you're going to make, we're going to make known to you because we're leading the narrative. We're going to make known to you in the, our media apparatus that we understand your, you know, broader chessboard perspective. You're not just going to give us <laughs> Juneteenth as a holiday, are you, without actually giving us what it takes for us to live because of what Juneteenth actually means, of what it actually means and what it's actually done. So that's a symbolic gesture. However, it's accordingly. So this is the way it's going to happen in our political, social, and economic war. Also physical, because we've reached the space in our war now where in our revolution, we have a revolution, but it's a war. So where we realize you harmed us physically because the government never respected us as a group or important people in terms of policy and constitutional exchange. So now you want to give Juneteenth a holiday because you understand the seriousness of it. First of all, my channel is serious. I'm going to tell y'all, when y'all come here, I'm not going nowhere. So please subscribe, join the channel. It's a very serious channel. It's going to be serious. I don't care if I don't have a lot of subscribers right now. I will get there. I'm not going anywhere. This is what we do. So, <laughs> and the one person that keep liking my videos, thank you. And then I got a few others. But Juneteenth has been approved, oh yeah, by government, by partisanship, yay, because they understand slavery is a real positioning, and after slavery, and the form of the country, slavery in this country is the center meat of it, this, is the, the, in terms of my body, and the millions of people that were sold, and used, and harmed, and shaped as a people, has been the wealth of this nation, which everybody benefit from, Every damn body. We got Chinese people walking around here treating us with all kinds of racism because they got bills passed, money, 50 mil, billion sent to the immigrants, illegal people coming in here. So you want to shape people for our future over our heads. And we're the natives here that were bought and sold and shaped and bred here for the wealth and for the riches of the, the this country, for the beauty of it, for the liberties of it, for the comfortability of this country. With the constitutional right that we're supposed to have, they have not yet been implemented in terms of correction. Killing our leaders, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. assassinated because he talked about economics, which we were supposed to receive, like the Jews got a blank check. We're supposed to be able to reach out and have opportunities and have some capital or the advances to try and do advances and the opportunity to put ourselves in that situation. Right. As a people. As a respectful people, as an intellectual people, as an educated people, as a people of diligence, as a people of due diligence, as a people to comply with the uprise, with the growth and development of community, as a people of tax paying, we pay taxes, we put money in the pot and don't receive any back. Also, oh, some white person or whatever going to come across, me. what about your income tax? Really? Income tax? Are you serious? So, so I'm just here to say that we understand what's going on. And I want to make mention that there's a lot of commentary on YouTube and other sectors of the media where we talk about reparations and our correction. And there's a lot of people that are bold enough to tell us the United States don't own black people shit. That was actually said. The United States don't own black people a damn thing. Said that to me. Well, I'm educated. And in my response, I dignified it with a comment. And I will. I got all day. We in a war. 
I got time. We got time. This is important to us. We're taking up the baton of self-preservation for very good reason. We've zeroed into this. This is where we are right now. You're still in hot water. President Joe Biden hiding and waving. Him and Kamala Harris waving and hiding around. Going to do beautiful commentary on exhibits of our sufferings without giving us protection and, and policy and forms of legislative orders without giving us the opportunity to say that myself can go to some bank or some partnering institution to say, well, I am a descendant of slavery and I would like to get a loan to open up a facility to gain some capital for my family. In six months, if I can turn over the profit that's demanded, then I'm successfully inside this sector. I can run this business. This is what you're doing for immigrants. This is what you're doing for people who come here to our country, who you want to shape as the future, the white liberals. Because basically, the Republicans basically got so mad, they didn't even want people here. But then they are, Republicans are partnering with Democratic strategies because of white supremacy. And if you're a white person and you hear this, if you're not white supremacy and you don't feel like you're part of white supremacy, don't subscribe to my talking points. But when you start saying stuff and defending this, um, these evil attributes on the other side of what I'm saying, then you are the epitome of what we're talking about. And that's sad. You've been taught that. But that doesn't stop us from talking. What are we going to do? We can't do that. What are we going to do? Die? We're going to die anyway if we're in this country and can't live and can't really eat or protect ourselves or become relevant in the face of government and community because what happens in terms of that government protection fail us and then we're being harmed by police and anything else because there's they don't protect they don't protect non wealth and if we just out here uh, being depicted and, and walking around doing stuff who's going to think you as a valuable source no one that's why people shoot on um, black men it's a big old picture we get it. Okay, you're talking to the uh, you're talking to the heir of people who've invented so many beautiful things. You're talking to the heir of a person who also had to struggle through the fact that there were white ancestors who impregnated my ancestors as bed wrenches. That's who you're talking to. I don't think white supremacy really understand who in the hell you're talking to, actually. And we need to get that across. Just let me say that. You're talking, you're not talking to an African. No, I have African descent. You're talking to a descendant of slavery. You're talking to the American Negro. You're talking to another Fred Hammond, another Dr. King, another Malcolm X, another Frederick Douglass, another Mar Marcus Garvey, another Mary Jane McLeod Bethune. You're talking to us. We're not something that's way off. We are adjacent to what the United States actually is and we are the belly of the United States and its wealth and its riches and its gather. We are the United States of America. Black people. And we know it. And it doesn't stop here. You cannot change that. We have receipts. We have the life. We eat the failure. We eat it. We breathe it. We exchange in it. <laughs> That's our intellectual makeup. We've also been depicted in it. We've also been a product of it. These United States of America. These United States of America. We are the center of it. We are the elephant in the room. Okay? We are the effing elephant in the room. That's who we are. And people don't get it. So when you don't get it and you do this, you're doing your damn intellect a disservice. And right in front of our faces. But we have to be able to convey and articulate that message to you. And a lot of us wasn't trying to do that because the proof is in the pudding. And we've been saying, okay, well, they already know. But no, it's in a time now where we take up the cause. We create a social construct as a unit of power, as a power unit under a power source. That we are in litigation to. 
and that owe us and that is supposed to form in terms of protection according to the bills that we pay even. We pay bills, we pay taxes, we haven't been served. And, and we haven't been, uh, de, de, you haven't asked in society, dignified our calls in terms of us not even paying taxes. Because we shouldn't have to do that. Not no descendant of slavery, a slave. For what a slave mean in this country? Whoa, really. And a lot of, it, it really amuses me because a lot of Chinese people, a lot of Asian people, and all that, they don't think we know necessarily who we are or how to convey the message of who we are because a lot of us don't do it because black people just kind of like said, you know what, let's just go on the go the get along gang like Kwame Brown said and they just want someone making money to try to deflect who we are, they're getting paid. Some people don't want to worry about it. Okay, it's like a pimp and a whore. The United States is a pimp and use black people for whores. So now you got black people acting a certain way, going into pictures, mirroring certain elements of community and certain elements of society that's been told or depicted for you throughout the public media. Huh? Being gangster rap because you dropped drugs off in my community. And made me act a certain way, then offered me the element of choice, an uncomfortable position like other groups have. So I got what my, uh, my, my whole culture is created. There's a good side of our culture where we know how to cook certain things. We found walla melons. We know how to fry chicken. We know how to do certain things. We understand the benevolence. You know what I'm saying? We do have a culture, but there's a culture that's been also depicted for us because of a docile uh, positioning in terms of what has happened historically and what has happened to us at the at the at the at the at the, at the action and the exchange and the sanction of our liberal nation these united snakes of america where other groups can sit there and impose themselves on us and tell us what we think we should that's how you do a slave you are subconsciously some people even exchanging in racism when it comes down to black people. It happens subconsciously. It's so systemic and so deep. I've told my white friends, I'm like, you're racist. People who say they're friends, and they say, oh, really? And then they look at them and say, dang. And a lot of times, plump people are hurt by it. But listen, this is set up this way because the United States has allowed you to be in this place without correcting me. And they have told me that I'm corrected by doing things like Juneteenth as a holiday. Martin Luther King as a holiday. So white people or whoever can say, oh, you have Dr. King as a holiday. You have Juneteenth as a holiday. You had your leaders. You can vote now. But what are all these resources that I've made off my bodies and deaths and hardships? being illegal to learn and read, all the resources, all the advances people get from the shaping of black people being on the bottom in terms of education and, and economics, in terms of social construct, mental, mental ability, mental health, slave syndrome, in terms of subservient syndrome, whereas though other people get to advance and smile because it never happened to them. But then you sitting next to Kyle or to Judy in the office, but you as a black person has been mirroring and emulating elements that the society choose for you because you never were corrected through the hurricane of slavery and Jim Crow and racism and redlining. Your money and your abilities and your expert and all of your opportunities it lay weight in government while it's being passed around the immigration in different sectors of this country because you are considered not to be important by the society. So right now, you are industrial, economical, and political slave. You're not free. Oh, yeah, free. Okay, you're free to go out and do this and do that, all the shaping of society, but you don't have what it takes to actually be free according to why you were enslaved. And you can't give us all that back at one time. It's too much you've done. So you have to start the process. So now when you begin the process, then we gain a foothold on the respect 
in terms of legislation and government power, where now people say black people are considered to be important by the nation. They can begin to build and begin to rewrite themselves and regather themselves as a people according to the respect of what happened to them, according to the, 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 the our, our pain and suffering, according to what is supposed to happen in terms of the situation, in terms of historical suffering to the liberties and the laws of, the, of a nation, the United States of America. So no. You're going to have to cut the check. You're going to have to make sure we have these opportunities in ways. You got these people that you call Native Americans, Indians, where they have all casinos and all this stuff and they don't pay taxes. You got the Jews over here from the Holocaust who've washed themselves clean, who became white, which is a spiritual cult. Not necessarily you're white as a person, but it, it white as in a spiritual cult in terms of power and what we allow as a country. Because they were a lot of people were not white when they got here. They were called Irish. They were treated as dogs. They became that because they got on the playing field of white people. And that's what you're trying to do right now to Latinos and Asians in our faces. But we are in the revolution. And we understand the structure of the society. It's 40 some million of us here. A lot of us are successful and we have a great intellect, a lot of us, and we're leading the narrative. We have thought leaders. We're not supposed to be disrespected in terms of humanity. You're denying us our human rights. That's a human right. We are locked in a feudalism as prisoners of war, paying taxes to a society that has throttled and always been on top of who we or have was sanctioned to be. Not who we are, but who we were sanctioned to be has not been let up from us because you never gave us the keys. We never got a 40 acre of mule, so we can't exchange in business in terms of what it means today. Other people come here and do that because they have the opportunity, even when they're from, not from here, and they don't expect us to realize that. They don't think we should know that. They don't think we should exist in a space where we're intellectually uh, competent, where we are conscious enough to actually understand that you don't bite the hand that feeds you. Everybody's benefiting from who we were and are today. And you're going to continue to allow it by partisanship in government, whether it's Republican or Democrat, because you say black people don't deserve, but you deserve everything from black people. Slave descendants. <clears throat> and now these people are at large speaking to us. We don't have no protection bill. We don't have no 1-800 number to call. Government has chosen not to respect, not to protect black people. They have the power to do so. You have shown that power and they're given that gratitude and respect to other groups very, very fashionably in our faces. And even tried to depict us as people who would harm someone else. Well, I'm here to tell you, that's not what the punch in the Kool-Aid, okay? So this going to go on and on until you understand, until we understand. We gather at the same time of awareness, making awareness in our community. We are gathering as a unit, uh, uh, the epitome of unity and power, okay? We realize it's been hard coming here, but why stop now? Why stop now? We go forward. We march on. We go forward to Damascus in terms of safety and protection. Yeah, a lot of our people are fooled. A lot of our people are proxy in things that are against us. We don't practice self-preservation, self the first rule of law. All we got to do is that, that one thing. This is a substantial argument and very real. Why do you think we would leave that? So what you do is understand, cut the chick. Make sure, you know, you got to understand what's going on here so that we can benefit in the way of safety. And you're going to have to, this is not an ask when we're demanding this, but we're also doing talking points and discourse on our YouTube channels, whether it's grassroots style or whether it's, you know, considered to be over skill. 
our people are to, to we have to convey the message to our media apparatus and to our community and our our society as a black people because this has happened to us and what you've done is actually inserted a political war upon us by benign and neglect and neglecting us that which would protect us that safety and opportunity with a dollar amount that's what you you're denying that and allowing the forces of government to harm us even physically we are in a war and you give us Juneteenth as a holiday that let us know and that let you know we lead the narrative and you're being stubborn about what's owed to us or oh, it's great and much larger than that. The banks are supposed to pay back according to who we are. Yes, they insured slaves, Chase, Wells Fargo, mm -hmm, Citizens Bank, people in, in, in a lot of empire who have gained a lot of foothold on success because of the blood of my ancestors and the, and the harm that you've treated me with in my tax dollar as a descendant without me owning anything that my grandmother had to die for and my father and grandfather had to die for. And this is what you help. This is how you help people according to their sufferings. And I want to let you Asians know something because a lot of time Asians come around and they say smart things. You talk about putting a noose around my neck. A lot of Asians and stuff did that. Don't forget about the concentration camps they had your grandparents in. Don't forget about the prostitution ring. Maybe that's how you were born if you wasn't aborted. Don't bite the hand that feeds you. And white supremacy, you don't forget about the inventions that we made in this country and the contribution that we gave to this country society with our blood and our bodies. Don't you forget about that. And you immigrants come in here and every day trying to get here where we built such a beautiful and thriving nation where you don't have it at home. Don't you forget that when you tell your daughter that or son that she's better than a black child. Don't you forget that that quarter and that dime you got in your pocket or whatever you got in the bank. That, that don't even belong to you. You're not even at home. We welcomed you here with open, open arms. According to our suffering, don't you bite the hand that feeds you. Don't you forget we built the White House. Don't you forget we broke records about who's the first successful heart surgery and the richest person in the world and all of this kind of thing. The first rich lady, Madam C.J. Walker. Don't you forget we as an intellect have been on top and throttled to that without the help of people as prisoners of war. Because of you, that you've been able to benefit from it. Don't you forget, Chinese, that you got stores in all our communities. Don't you forget that. Because it can very well change. Okay? Don't you forget. And black folks, don't you forget self-preservation. And that you are still a prisoner of war according to what you experienced in terms of slavery. I don't care how rich you are because you don't have wealth as a black person. I don't care what over skill or politician. Don't you forget you have been used in terms of subservient behavior according to the shaping of black people. Juneteenth is a symbolization of freedom by giving us a holiday. You are withholding my earnings and my inheritance so that I can build and so that we can be better in community and live and breathe and eat the betterment of the society. Thank you for joining me. I'm King Hart. Subscribe.